Callisto Protocol will, in fact, scare the pants off of all of us. There will be no more pants. What is fear? Fear is such a basic part of who we are. Where is it created? Atmosphere in a game like this is everything. It's terrifying, but it's beautiful. And how can we use it? With horror, there's no rules. Glenn Schofield and the developers of the Callisto Protocol invite you to join them and some very special icons of horror. I think it goes back to the earliest times around a campfire. The perfect horror experience is something that, that scares the piss out of me. Think of it as a roller coaster. I want it to make me feel things. I want it to startle me. They're all magic tricks. That's what we're doing in the movies. As they discuss crafting the perfect horror experience. <laughs> The five tenets of horror for the Callisto Protocol are brutality, atmosphere, tension, helplessness, and humanity. The Callisto Protocol is mastering horror. Hopelessness and hopelessness usually go hand in hand. They both refer to an experience of being out of control. As a storyteller, it's important to ride that line between helplessness and hopelessness. Uh, you want your characters to be in the biggest pressure cooker situation possible. Where if you're the audience watching them, oh, you, you poor thing, how are you going to get out of this? Which is the essence of drama, you know? No, 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 no. No! <laughs> but at the same time, you have to keep an element of hope in that story or you're gonna lose the audience. Come on, I can't. Yes, you can. We're almost there. I look at helplessness as a uh, physical condition. Helplessness, uh, I don't have enough ammo. I, I, don't, I, I don't have the right weapon. I, I don't know what to do here. It really should be a situation where, based on sort of scarcity of resources, that you feel like, you know, only by the skin of your teeth are you getting through every single encounter. But it is limited. There's a sense that this is adjust the situation for now, and maybe there are ways that we could get out of the situation. You need to have even that little bit of spark of fight left in you, uh, no matter how dire things have become. Once you become hopeless, it, it, to me that sort of means like giving in. Hopelessness is very long-term. It is future-oriented. Hopelessness is despair. It's an emotion. And the best thing in a horror game is like, I have hope and then you dash it, right? You just, you just smash that hope. Callisto is not conducive to hope. That place is pretty hopeless. And if you're able to escape off Callisto, where are you escaping to what? Space? Space wants to kill you more than anything. So it's a, it's a very fine line to make sure that you're uh, keeping your characters as helpless as possible without falling into hopelessness. Jacob! Jacob! For me, you know, the humanity equals uh, the emotional investment that I have in the story or the script. You go to movies to feel something, but you also go to identify with a character. Everything in fiction is all about relatability. So you can watch The Walking Dead and you can see zombies and know that zombies aren't gonna ever happen. That's never gonna be a thing, but the people in The Walking Dead that are dangerous, that they do encounter, that's very real. I mean, a lot of that stuff, you know, happens day to day. That's another thing that, you know, you can say humanity, but you can actually just replace that word with vulnerability. It's the most terrifying thing that there is. All of the characters within this game have something that you can relate to. They have a sense of humanity, and so you can actually care about them, that you want to survive. 
and that's what drives you forward in the game and that's what hurts you when the brutal things happen or when you run out of resources and you get that anxiety and that fear. One of the things I think is interesting is how the main character starts to lose a little humanity as he has to progress, right? Like as he has to do things that he wouldn't normally consider himself doing. And as a player, you're playing this person not realizing, wow, look at the horrible stuff I'm gonna have to do to survive. With the Callisto Protocol, one of the things that we were aspired to do was to tell a simple story with complex characters. We wanted to have characters that changed, that, that grew, that went on an emotional journey that, that you followed them along on. They came out the other side not quite what they were at the beginning. That's what people are going to relate with, I think, the most. They're going to be more invested in the characters and they're going to want to turn that scary corner and fight for what's right because they're invested in these characters. A big part of it is having characters that are that you can empathize with, that you can connect with, that you can feel their, their humanity, that at their core, there's a sense of sort of emotional realism built into the story. Most of the time on games, you don't know the entire plot. Every time we uh, uh, get to rehearsal, we um, go through uh, every single page of what we're going to work on for the next few days. And Chris and uh, Scott, they explain everything to us. Because we told the story in such, it was so disjointed. You know, we'd shoot like the end of the game first, and then they'd, they were sort of writing it as they went. They'd realize, okay, this works. We need to fix this. We need to, you know, amp this part of it up more. So you're constantly sort of, okay, what happened before this? And what are we doing? And he had, he was amazing at sort of, in, in Chris Stone, like sort of explaining where we were in the story. And so what we found sort of early on was that to really deliver the kind of scares and, 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 and intense feeling of terror that we wanted, it was critical that we have the foundation of strong characters and uh, narrative to build on. It isn't about escape, Jacob. About? Not anymore. What's it about? Answers. Soon everything will become clear. The truth of Black Iron. The cast of the Callisto Protocol is by far the best cast I've ever worked with on any any project. We don't have a big cast, but they've all brought something to it. They all got into it. These are people that, that share our love for the genre and, and wanted to bring sort of an essential humanity and realism to the roles. To see a human being, especially portrayed by a very able actor like Josh, you empathize. You put yourself in that position. That actor is reminding you how terrified you'd be if you actually saw that. What would that be like if that was real? And a good actor like Josh can remind you and scare you <laughs> in ways that you're not prepared for. You know, Josh is someone that we were lucky enough to work with on previous projects. We love working with Josh. Josh was awesome. Are you kidding? He takes the script and he goes a little bit further. He adds his own humanity. He gets into the character so much that at some point he's going, well, this is the way he'd do it. I approach it like I do any movie. You know, I really try to be as emotionally invested in, in committed as I can, even though you're in these crazy, you know, mocap suits with a giant helmet and a camera looking you right in the eye. Max! No! Max! Let me go! What are you talking about? We see their performance because we capture everything at the same time on large mocap stages with cameras on the face. We get to see their entire performance. And I think you can see the quality of their acting come through. It's nice to be able to have people who have an imagination. For them to be able to kind of get themselves immersed in the scene while they're standing on a stage, it kind of asks something new of them. The creative team essentially created a playground for us. And for those who are not familiar, the performance capture stage is a bare warehouse. You don't have that many props. No costumes, no sound, no nothing. And you don't have any set around you. It's all make-believe sets that take boxes and say, okay, this is a Jeep over there. This is the pipes stuck together. And that's the doorway into this crazy chamber. And there's 20 dead bodies and four monsters coming at you from the ceiling. So it's all about your imagination. So it makes it much harder. Open up! I'd love 
missing Karen um, in in the game because we're both actually huge fans of, of the, we boys. Love the boys. We love the boys, and suddenly, like I've yeah, seen seeing her in a full speaking role, uh, <laughs> was, was, was fantastic. Karen brought a lot of energy, enthusiasm. This was the first time that Karen had worked in games. There's a learning curve that it takes, and she, you know, she learned very quickly. I remember the first day on set, I was in my full body motion capture suit with the dots on my face and a huge camera right here on a helmet. And it was kind of this weird out of body experience where I had to sort of relearn how to walk and talk and work with my surroundings. Very quick survey, All right? See Danny down there. There she is. Hop down. Those things don't give up. We better get moving. You know, some of the other guys I hadn't worked with Sam Whitmer, uh, but I, you know, I had heard of him. Um, he's fantastic. That dude is crazy. Sam is one of the most committed actors that I've ever seen. That guy is fearless. <laughs> Definitely mad. Capital mad. Sam is a guy that has worked, obviously, extensively in games and animation. He, he understands this world top to bottom. He's also a guy that, that loves coming in and playing. When you let a bunch of creative people show up and you trust that they have some ideas that maybe you haven't thought of and you let them push those ideas out there, provided you have someone who's really good at saying, no, 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 that's too much, um, you're gonna get some really interesting, unique stuff. Five, two, one. Me and you, we got some unfinished business. Yes, we do. <laughs> As you can see, things have changed. We go through, you know, a lot of efforts to try to immerse them in the scene as much as we can. As a performer, the creative team was amazing. They're very much about the rehearsal process, very much about like giving us as much previs as, as they can so that we understand the world, they understand what it's gonna look and feel like. We show them video reference, we play music for them sometimes, we show them imagery. They have artwork of all of the infected, scary, terrifying monsters. And you get a little background on it and you understand that, okay, I'm a tough lifer prison dude. I don't stand a chance against that thing. <laughs> So yeah, that, that environment of being in the, in the performance capture volume is, is unique, but I think it's a lot of fun. Nailed it! You go to a, a film right now and you're gonna sit there for two hours and you're gonna, you're gonna feel like you're kind of part of the movie, but you're always kind of a little bit detached. You're a viewer. You know, the difference with the game is, is, is you are, you are that character. Right. You, everything you do, you have agency over what you're doing in that game and you have agency over the choices you make that create that story. You know, so the combination of just that interactive element and where technology is now with the graphics and the visuals and being able to get actual performances from actors versus just, you know, slapping someone's VO on top of some random person moving around, those are those are very different sort of experiences. Who did this? And why? It's like someone's trying to cover up what's happening here. So what happened to the original colony? All in all, when you're done playing the Callisto Protocol, I hope that you look back on it and think to yourself, man, first of all, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I think the hope is that you kind of set down that controller feeling a little bit shaken, like you've gone on a journey. I want them to feel excited, scared, and have fun. I want them to do what I'm probably gonna do, which is flip it, turn it, and hit go again. I want them to walk away going, what a ride. I need a nap. I just can't wait for the fans to play it, and I can't wait to see everyone, uh, everyone's reaction to it. I want people to walk away and just go, that was a good, good sci-fi horror game, man.